just if you're joining us for the first time, let me uh, appraise you of the situation. We were pl uh, planning to have a 258 kilometer stage today, the longest of the race, absolutely pan flat. Planned as one for the sprinters. Let's get a look at what uh, we had in store when we headed out of, of Morbenio today. There was a period of negotiation this morning before the st stage start and it was decided that the riders would begin the event. They would ride eight kilometers through to the conclusion of the neutralized section and then they get back in the buses. They weren't happy about the length of the stage, about the weather conditions and about just how arduous it was to put such a long stage in so close to the finish line. They all feel as if their uh, immune systems are compromised enough without a wet day and a long flat road. We'll, uh, we'll see how this one plays out, but it's a much shorter stage in prospect for the riders. 120 kilometers a long bike ride for a lot of amateur riders. For a professional rider, it's uh, not quite a cafe run, but it's, it's a much shorter affair. It's going to be quick. Yeah, this 200 meters, as you say, um, one of the shortest neutral zones, I think, probably in, uh, in history. And they have to race out the straight out of the blocks. It's done and dust, and it's Victor Campanazzi so goes off straight away. Look at the size of this group that's heading up. A conventional sprint stage does not normally feature big breakaway attempts, and there are quite a lot of riders trying to journey across. The, the group in front has actually come together now, so Peo, Journey, and the Campanarts have been joined by the rest. Um, and again, will that slow them down? Will that speed them up? Because it looks like the two Cofidis riders have now began to work. Well, they've pulled the pin, it's all done going to be for the break today that's the way it looks and they're on the blower from the FDJ squad as well as if to say how are we going to play this one they, uh, we can talk about how the finish line is going to work out today but I think we're going to talk about it in terms of what's going to happen amongst the riders up front because I think the break have won this race here comes Victor Campanarts. Clark wants to respond as well. Mosca's all over this one, and they're taking turns to cover the attacks of a very, very exercised and motivated Victor Campanarts. Uh, it's Alex Dowse that finds himself at a difficult moment. He's going to ask other people to, to cover this one, and Campanarts stomps on the pedals. But the riders that have come across, Sander Army has joined at the back of this group as well, and also Joseph Czerny. So some big, big engines are here, and a Clark in the middle. This is a good split. Journey rolls over the top of the latest attack by Victor Campanarts and is stomping on the pedals to race solo. Where is the contribution going to come from behind? And this man out in front is a rocketing down the other side of that little climb, the only significant climb of the day, but it was enough to see him launch clear. And it's steep enough to not be able to get on top of the gear here. So nearly 30 seconds advantage, which he's taken in a very short space of time. But it's holding steady here at 28 seconds. As, um, and a little bit of a double turn done there. There's a rider just, I think it was, uh, it looked, I think it was uh, Clark who had to slip into the wheel of uh, Elio Kaiser because they were starting to struggle. And because of the kind of intensity here, if we get a little bit of a break up and riders start to miss turns, that's when the pendulum will swing back in the favor of the man out in front. His advantage still holding steady at 20 seconds, 1,300 meters remaining. The kite beckons. And what about this for the CCC squad, the embattled CCC team? As finally they get a victory in Giro d'Italia 2020. He has time to compose his victory salute across the line. He can barely believe it. Joseph Journey takes it home to glory and Asti today. Let's remind ourselves of the finishing order at the conclusion of stage 19 with Joseph Journey getting the victory by just 18 seconds ahead of his former breakaway companion, Victor Campanarts. Jacobo Mosca leading in Simon Clark and Ilio Kaiser for third. Arme, Torres, Peo, Carboni and Dowsett. Joseph, not exactly the stage that we expected. Was it what you expected? Well, definitely not. We were uh, we were standing in the start line, and yeah, we uh, the organizer uh, said that we can share a little bit. So it, it's very it's very nice from him because we had last three days really heavy, and yeah, it was it was a really hard day also today with the rain. But yeah, I'm really happy that uh, I was lucky in the breakaway, and then we were working together. And yeah, in the final, it was just who uh, had the uh, better legs, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. It's the uh, situation as you were, 12 seconds between Wilco Kelderman and his teammate Jai Hindley, Theo Gagan Hart, uh, 15 seconds back, Peo Bilbao, 119 in arrears, top four certainly well in contention. 12 second margin over his teammate Jai Hindley, but uh, Wilco Kelderman, 
who has finished as high as fourth in the Vuelta España three seasons ago. Now within touching distance of a famous first success in a Grand Tour. He is uh, two days away. He's got a big mountain assault tomorrow. I can hope he has a good sleep. <laughs> I can hope he have a good sleep tonight, won't he? Uh... Need to practice that old bubbly spraying. It doesn't uh, doesn't come naturally, Jim. 